This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it's the Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, this is the show where we talk with awesome people doing awesome things around Pittsburgh and inside and outside Pittsburgh around tech, gaming, social media, and so much more. And we got a great guest here in the studio as usual. But first, please check out everything at awesomecast.net uh, or .com, actually. Uh, both work. It's okay. You can use either one. And please subscribe to Awesome Channel, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Play, podcasting, and video versions on the Awesome Cast. Uh, YouTube and Facebook page and of course please follow that Facebook page so you know when we go live with some of these uh, from the studio we love to use the Facebook live and have you guys get involved with us during the shows so with me is a return guest and I don't know how many return guests we've actually had on this show now that I think of it we do that all the time on the wrestling show but but this is new uh, James Deegan from Mega Cat Studios is with us again well, it's great to be back, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for maybe anybody that didn't catch the last interview, uh, uh, what's MegaCat up to? So we've been doing contract dev for about a decade uh, under various names. And end of 2015, we decided to kind of put up or shut up and start investing in some of our own IPs and release some of our own game creative ideas. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone who's in game dev and design <clears throat> is fulfilled so much more seeing their own kind of uh, fruits of labors come to life and be commercialized. But as anyone who's ever been involved with any startup will tell you, it's wholly bleep bleep <laughs> challenging <laughs> and interesting. So uh, we're lucky that we're on point for everything that we wanted to finish this calendar year. Mm -hmm. We have four games we'll be releasing before the holiday season. So right now it's just uh Lots and lots of additional prep infrastructure work. Mm -hmm. Last time we talked to you, I think you were still in the still in the planning stations or development stages for things like Coffee Crisis with our friends at Black Forge Coffee, uh, things like that. Can you tell us a little bit about how those are going? You know, you guys, you talked about last time you guys were really dedicated to like the packaging and and some really special experiences when you deliver those things. So we have a very clear like 10,000 foot iteration of mm -hmm. the business where we have the retro cartridge based games with physical fulfillment and then the much more scalable indie digital distribution things. So we are, we're all kind of born and raised on some type of pixel, whether mm -hmm. it was Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. And there's this kind of incredible retro renaissance that's taking place the last decade or so where everyone's meeting these uh, kind of interesting gaming pathways where you don't have a ton of time. Nostalgia is incredibly strong. <clears throat> and there's something really easy, uh, replayable, of sitting down with some friends for a couch grow up, smack talking, picking up a controller, and you know turning it off without having to memorize a 200-hour RPG. That seems that seems like that seems like the case because I know even looking through like the iOS store, like I'm noticing right. more that eight bit stuff. Duck game is a big thing. That oh I yeah, know a lot awesome. of friends are into right that we're playing over our work hard. So so you guys are really kind of riding that wave right now. Yeah. So from the like pixel aesthetic, something that you see across all platforms mm -hmm. when we're working on something that's released on mobile or Xbox One, PS4, PC, is they all have kind of the Mega Cat ethos where Couch co-op, uh, local local replaying features that are exclusive to each platform. And then uh, I, I guess we want to try to find a nice term for it, but we try to inject our humor and everything we're doing. So lots of little Easter eggs and details that show anyone who's playing one of the games, mm -hmm. the tender loving care we put into them. And and a lot of a lot of fun little fun stuff. So I, I love that you guys and, and you know you spoke to this a little bit, but you guys like actually release some of this stuff on cartridges you know uh, for nintendo for sega genesis and things like that so you can you can dig out your old nintendo or one, one of the new retcons or something and it's a really kind of that uh that 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 feel yeah is you take all the challenges with uh releasing a video game and then make it with really antiquated tech stacks to take 10 times more 
a lot of restrictions mm -hmm. and then add cost of goods and you get cartridge based game. So it's definitely something you do because you love it. And we're very much dedicated to that. It's a big part of like who we are uh, at a core. So every game that <clears throat> we have a retro release for, instead of just re-releasing it uh, with different packaging or porting it, we're doing something that we're kind of branding as an upmake. So I'll give you an example with Coffee Crisis. So the Genesis version and the PC version have the, the same first four fundamental features of a, an easy <clears throat> to pick up, low barrier to entry, grab the controls, start hitting things, good feedback, same storyline, same characters. The PC one just has some PC centric features. So when someone plays games on whatever their preferred platform is, it's still familiar, but kind of works to the capacity of, you know, as an example, like Unity. So lots of uh, cool lighting, Unity effects, and things you would expect in the PC platform uh, exist just on the PC port. So because of the size and art limitations being lifted on PC too, there's a few other combos, some really cool effects for punching, defeating, kicking, etc. enemies. And I think it's a good opportunity to bring those games to life while still preserving our, our basic retro roots. So re really, like, there's kind of a collectability that, like, you know, it's kind of a different game on these different platforms. So you kind of want to see those different levels, right? There's something called game feel. And mm -hmm. so, so, you know, game feel a lot of times for a game like Coffee Crisis, like a beat 'em up it's when you're controlling the character, what it feels like, how the character interacts with its environment, how it feels when you punch an enemy with a, a canteen of coffee. <clears throat> so it's the controller's haptic feedback. It's the, the action trail behind the, the attack. It's the, uh, you know, kind of full explosive hit to seeing the alien's head knock back. Maybe some alien goo come out of the side. And, you know, those are things that are they're hard to mimic and create on retro platforms. And I haven't seen anybody successfully take something that works explicitly in retro specifications and have a successful launch on new gen platforms. So the upmake thing is our our solution. You know, make sure we're giving people a full experience and hopefully encourage them to try it on both platforms. That was really awesome because you know something like uh, Coffee Crisis. Yeah, I remember you were telling me it went through development. Like there was hand drawn art that you were porting over into the into the bits. Yeah, you know, our three lead artists with Andy and Frank and Harry, uh, we explicitly do hand-drawn art. So it takes a whole lot longer to do hand-drawn animations for every frame, every cell, but the production value and the final product is definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. So um, like I said, it's, it's been, you know, a couple of years since we've talked here. So, you know, what's kind of any new angles you're taking on that other than the up make or anything like that? Anything you've learned entrepreneur-wise uh, from... Megacast Studios you want to talk about? I would say across the entire spectrum of uh, gaming, we decided that a better fit for us is establish a, the brand quality standard. And instead of investing very deeply into a ton of forever long high risk projects or a ton of very simple, very shallow projects, uh, we developed our own kind of Megacat categories. So mm -hmm. we have a, one that we determined is heavily emphasizing couch co-op. And that's a great example. Of that would be log jammers, which I think you saw at Replay FX. So, you know, grab your axe, tighten up your corduroys, and get ready to throw some axes with lumberjacks and zombies. It's very quick, high replay. Anyone who's played log jammers is definitely familiar with that type of uh, genre. But the arcade fantasy sports is something we don't see often enough these days. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, whenever <clears throat> you ask people about sports games of the like 16 bit era, 8 bit era, Tecmo Bowl, NBA Jam, uh, really very huge, like recurring fan bases are kind of timeless. So we wanted something that was quick, high action, had a, you know, an approachable skill level that the more time you put into it, you could see someone who has some level of mastery in it with timing. So Duck Game is a great example of that. They take a really simple concept with very fast gameplay and features. Well, you can ignore that. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just got some stuff going on in, in studio here. So like the uh, the short, highly replayable couch co-op games, a great example of that is Coffee Crisis and um, Log Jammers. On the other side, something that's very feature rich and has a much longer dev pipeline and, and is absolutely uh, 10 times over more expensive and labor intensive to make, that's something like Bite the Bullet, which is our up and coming uh, run and gun and eat game where you can play as 
kind of two iterations of the same character type. So when you're in human form, you have a, a bevy of guns. You can pick up ammo, modify, upgrade, normal running gun things. You can think of Earthworm Jim for a visual. And then we have a unique mechanic where you have to constantly eat and stay into a giant muscular zombie form. And when you're in zombie form, uh, nothing can hold you back. Hyper destructive environments, tons and tons of unique characters that can be uh, punched through with a fist the size of your body. It, it, it reminds me of like like GTA. You had to make sure you ate appropriately, yeah, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's kind but, of like that, but kind of like on a different <laughs> level, right? You know, it was originally conceptualized as like the first offspring of a a zombie and human like mm -hmm. uh, like kind of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just spun out of control once we started making uh, muscular zombies. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, do you have any any uh, tips for anybody looking out there trying to get like into uh, game development or, or trying to start their studio in, like this? I would say that the easy first task that everyone should start with is shipping a game, going through all the steps aside from pre-planning to see what it's like going through launching, marketing infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, adhering to whatever your estimates will be. Any dev or artist will tell you that uh, no matter how far into their career they get, it's always hard to predict edge cases and what will pop up. Just releasing a game is the best first thing you can do. And, and, and I want to point out for, you know, those who don't know, uh, we've had you, we actually did two awesome, previous awesome chats with you for at least two of your companies. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're a serial entrepreneur, I guess we could label you, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, and it's not just game development. Like you're, you're, you're handling all sides of kinds of business and technology. It's really unfair for me to even represent Mega Cat because all the talent is not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely like the, the great team that we have. But for uh, E360, we're an end-of-life IT assets company. Mm -hmm. So it has a plug or a battery, and it's better for reuse rather than recycling. That's where we come in. And that really, that really, I, I love that because I got to visit, and I think you've moved since I, I visited yep. you last, but it was just this interesting marriage of, of old <laughs> technology and then old video games, like right, right next to each other. Um, th that was a really cool vibe, I thought, around all of that. There's definitely a little bit of crossover. Mm -hmm. And I think that at the heart of any like game collector, there's like the ability to collect things is something that's driven that business. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so if anybody wants to find out about Mega Cat Studios, the latest that you guys got going on, um, where, uh, where can they uh, check you out? And Mega Cat Studios, just like that. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, megacatstudios.com. Check it out. We have lots of cool things happening in September. This Friday coming up, we'll be at the 21 and over Carnegie Science Center event. Mm -hmm. Brutal Beer Fest coming up this weekend. And then all over the place between now and December. There you go. There you go. Uh, look for them around. I, I, I love that. I just completely stumble on them at Replay FX. I'm like, <laughs> hey, I know you guys. Hey. Uh, so it's gone. And you guys had a pretty sweet. Oh, we didn't talk about it. you guys have a VR game you're working on, too. Yeah, the VR game is definitely its own kind of a pioneering feel. So VR is pretty not, new still. Not so retro. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we try to maintain some some retro qualities, right? So we chose like a, a low poly styling. Mm -hmm. We tried to make sure that the mechanics had a very like satisfactory feedback loop that anyone can still pick it up and play. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go check that out. Uh, it's been really awesome to see these games and see your catalog grow and see the kind of crazy stuff you guys come up with these uh, release packages as well. Um, so go check it out if you're into retro gaming, if you're into video gaming, there's a lot you're going to find a lot of fun uh, with Mega Cat. Check them out. Uh, check out all the rest of the shows over at AwesomeCast.com. Uh, all the awesome chats on uh, your local podcast catcher or video or however you'd like to uh, view or partake in the show. And of course, keep an eye out for our events as we go live here on Facebook Live and maybe a few other places if some technology works out for us here in the future. Uh, so until next time, thank you to my awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Awesome. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.